throughout the whole history of slavery, never, never in human history has there been more suffering that generated more profit and was linked to the lives of more people around the world ever in history than what's happening in the Congo right now. The cobalt that's being mined in the Congo is in every single lithium-ion rechargeable battery manufactured in the world today. Every smartphone, every tablet, every laptop, and crucially, every electric vehicle. So you and I, we can't function on a day-to-day -day basis without cobalt. Three-fourths of the supply is coming out of the Congo, and it's being mined in appalling, heart-wrenching, dangerous condition. And so that's why people need to know, because by and large, the world doesn't know what's happening in the Congo. So with the whole thing about affirmative action being taken away, I was going to make a video, but I don't want to repeat a lot of the same points that my mutuals are making. I will say, when I was in high school and even in college, every single person who would complain about affirmative action, I would ask them, what was your entry essay about? Like, what was your, like, personal essay about? The most boring fucking essay you would actually ever read in your life. Literally in high school, they would tell me like, oh, you only got in because you're Latino. And I was like, fuck, better luck next time for you. And I'd be like, what was your personal essay about? They're like, oh, but my mission trip. Do you know how many white people are going to go to that college? They have enough colonizers, I can assure you. And then in college, when you would hear like, oh, what was your personal essay about when they would complain they didn't get into like MIT and Harvard? They're like, oh, it's about when I broke my leg when I was a soccer player. Do you not think they have not read that shit a thousand times? Maybe it's not affirmative action. Maybe you're just fucking boring. I don't know, though. All the boiled chickens literally applying with 4.0s. Maybe the pupusa with a 3.5 was just a little bit more interesting. I don't know, though. I told them, put it on. They started throwing it back. I'm about all of the features, but I take a like in the house. I don't even go out in the house no more. I get it right where I'm at. They said, Chandler, I'm loving this new shit, but I cannot shake it to that. Here you go. Don't let me down. I'm trying to see all the ways you move, and then I'm like, go downtown. Are you playing games with me? I told them without a doubt. I feel like Summer Sanders. They're trying to figure it out. <laughs> Rappers ain't up to the test. Never would I call you the best. Put that on my family crest. You rap, but it does not cop you a check. I know it. Turn it off low key green, I blow it. You get a bag and then you throw it. I put a bag in a safe and grow it. They don't even know the half of it. They don't know I've been working. They don't know that my life revolves around writing fire ass verses. They don't know that these followers that I've got have never been purchased. The only thing that they know is Chandler can dance and Chandler ain't perfect. I've been seeing a lot of debating about whether or not the lyrics in my new song figure it out. The gender neutrality of the lyrics was intentional. It was intentional. My pronouns are he, they. Ask anybody in my family, my friends, my team. The lyrics were intentional. Case closed. You like my voice? It's how you want. This ain't no way till you see it in the I'm having a lot of trouble communicating with people in my comment section. Whenever I click on their profile, I see like them holding a fish or whatever. So I'm gonna try a new tactic. I'm gonna catch a fucking fish and then hold the fish while explaining the concept to y'all. All right, just give me one second, bro. Come on. Go. Look at this bucket. He's coming in. All right, I'm back, folks. Let's get started. A pronoun is a word that substitutes for a noun. Like it or not, you have pronouns. <gasps> Breathe. <gasps> All right. It's important we use someone's preferred pronouns because that's just the respectful thing to do. Wait, bro. I'm not speaking their language right now. Give me one second. I use, <laughs> I use people's preferred pronouns because it's the respectful thing to do. I'm a decent human being. Am I speaking your language now, Tyler? Jake? Jackson? Colin? Connor? Tyler? Am I speaking your language now?
If you could completely eliminate homelessness in the United States by paying less than the price of a bag of Cheetos, would you? This video is not going where you think it's going. Hop on, we're gonna learn some stuff. I calculated what it would cost to pay median rent, electricity, and groceries for every single homeless person in every single state. Here's a spreadsheet in case you're curious, and you might have guessed the total is huge. It's about $6,889,556,470.86. That's gigantic, right? But you know what's bigger? The U.S. military budget. That comes out to around $760 billion dollars, and that's excluding mandatory outlays by the Department of State and programs by the Department of Energy, which we can't reduce. It would take less than 1% of our military budget to eliminate homelessness in the United States, but what does that really mean? Let's get a grasp of that. What does it really mean? It means for the U.S. military, fixing our homelessness problem would feel roughly the same as what it feels like for somebody on median wage to pay for Netflix. But instead of binging The Witcher with a tub of whipped cream and a bag of Cheeto puffs, you're eliminating homelessness. Now, our military budget doesn't just come out of thin air. It mostly comes from our taxes. There are 334,233,854 Americans as of the last census, but only roughly 157 million of them are a part of the U.S. workforce. So if all 157 million U.S. workers decided to pay a little bit extra in taxes to completely resolve homelessness outside of our military, how much do you think that we'd have to pay? Keep in mind that this covers median rent, groceries, and electricity for every single homeless person all year long. Well, if you guessed more than $3.66, you'd be wrong. Feel free to go back and do the math yourself, but that is the total. $3.66 and 66 cents per U.S. worker to completely resolve homelessness. Now, bearing that in mind, how much do you think it costs per person to pay for the military on average? Would you have guessed $407.64 a month? I wouldn't have, but that's the right answer. Now, of course, it's more complicated than that because all of us have different incomes, so we pay different amounts of taxes, but let's look at that. Quick reminder, the U.S. government spends about $768 billion of our tax money on the military. That means if you're making the 2021 median wage of $45,760 a year, you personally spend around $66 a month month on our military. You, personally, you spend $66 a month on our military. Remember how it costs less than $4 to feed and house the entire homeless population? Now, of course, it's still more complicated than that, but it shows where our priorities lie. The fact is, we could easily eliminate homelessness in the United States by paying less than a bag of Cheetos. And if we're concerned about the national debt, we could take some Cheetos away from our military. They're pretty well fed. You will probably not guess what the most common reason is that Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies list for why they need to work overtime. <laughs> this is so stupid. They literally just leave it blank. I know this is small, but basically around 30 to 60% of the time when they are working overtime, they just leave it blank and don't give any reason. These figures, by the way, are all from an audit that was released within the past week. Here's a little bit more of a description you can hit pause and read. And it's worth noting, this is not a small amount of overtime that people are working. Because of this, they go over their allotted overtime budget by around 50 to $150 million every year for all of the years that were included in that audit, which goes back to 2015. So obviously I tweeted about this, and despite the fact that Twitter is pretty broken right now, the responses were amazing. I'm surprised they don't just put, I like money. To be fair, it'd be a little awkward if they wrote, quote, sheriff gang stuff in the line. And there were a few other funny ones, but this one actually makes a really important point. Because while they are overspending on overtime, they are underspending on the jails. Meaning that they are not using up their full budget for maintenance of the facilities and care of inmates. And that is all the more remarkable when you think about the fact that they are currently in the middle of three lawsuits over the fact that they cannot manage to maintain constitutional conditions behind bars. Like, literally, the DOJ, the U.S. Department of Justice, sued Los Angeles because our jails are so bad. Make the circle, make the circle. Let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. How many years have you been a homosexual? I was born homosexual, it's beautiful. To that love in the drawing was the weeping of me. That the sound of the soul must be known by the tree. Must be felt for the fight, the cold. Afraid it fire, but that was long ago. A weirdly common experience for me is that people in my real life, hi guys, will interact with me in person or interact with like their people in person who then interact with me. And they get offended at the things I say because they are like, are they? Is Paige talking about my loved one in particular? And then they get offended. How dare Paige Leo be talking about autism traits and how dare me in my head be connecting them? to my own father and getting upset about it. Like people in my life will watch my videos and tell me like, 
I don't know if you should be saying that because it, you know, people are gonna start thinking that you're talking about them. That's where we're different, Barbara, because I would like that. In, in particular, specifically, actually. I'm specifically bringing up autism traits, and if they resonate with you, that's not my circus. <laughs> I don't want people to think that, I've, that like you're talking about them though, but like I am. And they should think that. They should think that heavily. And not get offended or upset by it, and especially not try to tell me that I should stop doing it because they're offended and upset by the fact that they might be autistic or that like someone they love might be autistic. If you're offended, by that, that's not my that's not my problem. I'm literally trying to not do that. I'm trying to say, hey, don't be offended at the fact that you might be autistic. Because it's not a bad thing. I'm literally autistic. If I say things and you know, you're like, that connects with a person in my life, don't get offended. Do you think I know that person in your life and I'm talking about their true life story? No. I'm talking about autism and life with autism. And if that connects, then maybe you should talk to that person about their life with maybe autism because autism's hard so not like i'm just saying things for fun this is for a purpose reason and being undiagnosed with autism is hard therefore i will happily tell everyone and anyone who i think is autistic that i think that they are autistic if i so want to especially on this platform that i own just a little uh psa i guess to everybody i don't give one fuck if you think that having autism is bad Between Donald Trump doing criminal document hoarding for clout, Elon Musk doing his level best to absolutely decimate Twitter as a platform, and the entire submarine saga, I think it's safe to say that not only is a meritocracy a lie, it's actually the inverse. It's not just that we don't live in a society where the best and brightest are being funneled towards the top, but actually that we live in a society where those who control wealth and power are actively some of the stupidest members of our republic. Instead of any kind of talented 10th formula, which I also don't agree with, where like the brightest members of society raise us all up to their level of intelligence, we have a society in which the wealthy and powerful are actively trying to make us more stupid. If you are socially, emotionally, mentally, physically, academically, intellectually adept, you will struggle more in this country. We live in an inverse meritocracy, an idiocracy. Well, it's actually so that if you see someone with a crossed out swastika on their jacket, you can rip it off. TikTok is the only place that I've seen in anyone saying that they don't want anti swas in the scene. I have only seen this on TikTok. The majority of the people that I see sharing the sentiment are young or they are people that are clearly not in the punk scene. Sorry, I'm gonna have to call you out a little bit. But you know what? Calling people out, especially posers, is a time-honored tradition in our community, so get used to it. anti swas is not as commonly misunderstood to be something that came into the scene to show Jewish punks that they're safe. It came into the scene to show white mm, and neo mm, that they are not safe in that crowd, in that group, in that event. That is why it's worn. And the people who wear that symbology in my scene, historically, they wear it because they are about that. Meaning that they are going to enforce that those individuals are not welcome. I am a punk of Jewish heritage. I wear the symbols. The anti swas I have a shirt with a huge one on the front. I love wearing it. Patches, buttons, I love it. It makes me feel proud and happy. So let me tell you, if you come at me and you rip a patch off of me or a button off of me, with that symbology, I'm immediately going to assume that you are a white mm or a neo mm, and I'm going to hand your butt to you very quickly and as hard as possible. I'm going to focus all of my rage on that entire subgroup onto your face. So I'd have to break it to you. And also if you do with a seam ripper, which is like, be funny, like a seam ripper, don't come to the scene with a seam ripper. That is so bizarre. You can't even rip a patch off with your bare hands. And you bring a seam ripper. <laughs> but anyways, when I realize it's a seam ripper and not a small weapon, I'm going to mock you mercilessly as I beat you. White mm, and Neil mm, would like nothing more than for us to get rid of that symbology. Because then they blend in better. And then they can say that they're welcome. Or they can argue that. And we don't like leaving room for them to argue. Not in my scene. Also, getting rid of the anti swa symbology is a little ableist, don't you think? A lot of white mm, and Neil mm, can't read.
If you are watching this video, I want you to stop scrolling and share it around. If you have more information, please message Free My People on Instagram. Shit like this brings the movement down Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around